Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you 13 tidbits of knowledge or tips and tricks that are guaranteed to help you in your Albion and Lion adventure. Now whether you're a new player or a veteran, I guarantee there's at least one thing that will help you in this video, so I've put the timestamps in to help you navigate around them in case you want to skip some or just go to ones that you think you don't know already. Albion Online has a hidden mechanic where if you get hit by, say, a stun, the next stun that hits you will have its duration reduced if it's within a certain amount of time during or after that original stun. This is essentially intended to make it so that you can't get stun locked forever. Now this is just a very basic explanation of this mechanic, it's actually way more complex and confusing than this, I could dedicate an entire video to try to understand it, but there are a couple things that are good to know about it. So if you have two stuns in your kit and you want to use them together and chain them together to stun the opponent for longer, it's more efficient for you to use the longer stun first than the shorter stun second. This is because you're going to be reducing the duration of your short stun versus your long stun. You can see in this clip the difference is very minor, but it will be more pronounced with longer duration stuns. Another thing to note is that if you want to keep your opponent controlled for the longest amount of time, it's better to use a stun and then something like a Demon Helm Silence right after because the Demon Helm Silence won't be reduced by that original stun duration, whereas another stun would be. So you can go like stun, silence, stun, rather than stun, stun, silence. Another thing that's really important with this mechanic just to watch out for quickly is that if you're with an ally and they have like a really long stun and you have a short stun, you want to make sure you're not using that short stun before they use their long stun or you could really mess them up and have that long stun have a very significantly reduced duration. When you are gathering and trying to fill journals, you have to be really careful about how you position them in your inventory. Essentially, the way it decides which journal to fill is purely based on positioning and if the journal has already started or not, and not the tier. So when you gather a resource, it checks your inventory left to right, top to bottom, looking for first any already started journals to fill, and then repeats the process again if there wasn't one for journals that have not been started yet. Essentially what this means for you is that you want to make sure that the journals that you want to fill the most, for example the highest tier journals, are found at the top left of the inventory and that the journals that you want to fill the least, like the lowest tier ones, are found near the bottom right of your inventory. Now that being said, even if you organize your inventory correctly, you have to be careful because it can still mess up as you're gathering. For example, if you're gathering resources from tier 3 to 5 and you have the journals as well in your inventory, if you start with a tier 3 resource, it will open up the tier 3 resource book and then any resource that you gather, no matter if it's tier 3, tier 4, or tier 5, will automatically go into that tier 3 journal because it's the only one open. Every mountain in the game has a stat called Time to Gallop and it doesn't work in the way that you think it does. Essentially, all that stat means is that it takes that much time for your mount to go from standstill to having the gallop buff when it starts moving. What this does not mean is that when you're already galloping and something stops you gallop, like a mob hitting you, it will not take that much time to return to gallop. If your gallop gets interrupted, it takes a flat 8 seconds no matter what mount to return to gallop. Now this still means that the time to gallop is an important stat, for example if you're gathering it helps you move from resource to resource faster, but it doesn't really help you as much as you think it does when it comes to escaping from gankers after you get poisoned or something like that. Every ability that goes into a certain spot like your E ability all shares the same cooldown. This is most notable and important when you have mounts with an ability. So for example, if I use the Raven's Fear here which has a 30 second cooldown and then dismount, my E on my Spirit Hunter is still going to be on cooldown for 30 seconds whereas my other abilities will be up in the normal 5 seconds. This is especially important when you're using a mount with a movement ability as it will take your F slot or your boot slot, so using it will put your boots on cooldown if you get dismounted. On the topic of special mounts, some mounts like the Raven and Pest Lizard have a passive ability that procs when they take damage. Often when you want to be using this ability aggressively to fear opponents, you don't want to get it procced on things like mobs hitting you by accident. 
So what you can do is you can quickly dismount right as the mob is hitting you to hit your person instead of your mount and then quickly mount back up. You won't lose much time and you'll save your mount's ability. This is the easiest to do with ranged mobs but can also be done with melees. Another thing to note about this trick is that it can also be used to save yourself from being forcefully dismounted by damage if your mount is low health. If you're about to get hit on a low health mount, you can quickly dismount taking the damage on your person instead of your mount and maintaining that health on your mount instead. When you swap any piece of gear except for potions, you have a global 10 second cooldown on all of your abilities. The same 10 second rule applies if you keep your weapon equipped but swap abilities on it. However, when you dismount, you only have 5 seconds before you can use your abilities. So if you're pressed for time, you can mount up, change your gear, and then dismount as fast as possible, and it will be under the 10 seconds that you would otherwise have if you were to just swap your gear. Even mounting up from scratch takes 3 seconds, which would make your total time 8 seconds before you can use your abilities, which is still faster than just swapping them outright. When you're getting ganked in the black or red zone, a lot of the time what will happen is you'll get towards the gate and you'll get dismounted just before you reach the gate and you'll zone in dismounted. Now most people will just tell you to stand still and wait for your mount because the bubble duration is longer than your mount cooldown, allowing you to mount up before your bubble ends, however this isn't quite the best thing to do. A competent gank group will send some people through the gate to dismount you as soon as you get back on your mount and your bubble ends, but will also leave some people behind in the zone you just came from that are dismounted and waiting for you so that they can dismount you as soon as you zone back through. So essentially what you need to do is you need to get mounted and bait them all into the same zone so you can go into the other one. In my experience, the best way to do this is to start walking into the zone as soon as you load through. You want to keep walking towards the middle of the zone for around just under half of your bubble's duration. This is going to cause the gankers that are in your zone following you to call to their buddies on the previous zone that you've committed to the next zone or the zone you're currently in, and they will zone in after you as well. You can then start walking back to the gate that you just zoned out of, mount up as soon as you can, and then walk through the gate, and there should be no gankers waiting for you. When you're fighting someone and they go invisible, obviously they will be deselected as your target so you cannot target them with spells. However, as long as you don't select another target by attacking someone else or being attacked by something else, it will automatically reselect them as your target when they pop out of invis. So if you spam your auto attack button, which default key is space as they're coming out of invis, your character will instantly turn its body towards them right as they come out of invis, allowing you to quickly find where they went. Now most people are aware that you can shift click items instead of click and dragging them into your inventory or into your bank or things like that, but did you know you can also shift click and drag to split a stack? Now I've never used mobile so I'm not sure if there's something similar for the mobile client, but it's an amazing tool to get used to using for speed and organization when it comes to stacks of items. When you use a dungeon map, it can spawn X amount of zones away from you. The number depends on what type of map it is, so solo maps can spawn within your zone or the zone next to you, and group maps can spawn up to two zones away. However, you can better control where your dungeon spawns by going into specific zones in the royal cities. The zones inside of cities count as zones for the dungeon map, so for example if you were to spawn a group dungeon map in the Caerleon bank, it's guaranteed to spawn in one of the four zones right around Caerleon. This trick also works for Hellgate maps. Most attacks and abilities in Albion either do physical damage or magical damage. The amount of damage these do is based on the target's physical resistance and magical resistance respectively. Cloth armor has a higher magical resistance and a lower physical resistance, leather armor has equal of both, and plate armor has higher physical and lower magical resistance. What does this mean? Well, if you're trying to figure out what's going to be the best damage for you to do, you also have to think about your opponents. If you're going to be hitting tanks, magical damage is going to do more damage than the equivalent physical damage, but if you're going to be hitting squishies in cloth armor, physical damage is going to do more damage than equivalent magical damage to cloth armor users. 
Sometimes somebody dies when they're trying to zone out of the zone or something and their body or loot gets stuck behind the gate and you can't get it without going through that gate and then coming back and picking it up. However, if you have a friend around, you can duel that friend and then freely walk into the gate without getting forcefully zoned through, allowing you to pick up that loot faster than other rats trying to get it. When you level up your specialization in a weapon or an armor piece, it gives 2 IP to that armor piece, but it also gives a little bit of IP to everything else in that class. So for example, a spear will give some IP to all other spears. However, the three basic items will give more IP than the artifact and Avalonian items. So for example, if I'm trying to optimize my IP for the one-hitted spear, it would be more efficient for me to level up a normal spear like the glaive or the pike than it would be for me to level up one of the artifact spears like the heron spear or the Avalonian spear or the daybreaker. Okay, that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed watching and learned something that will be helpful for you. If you enjoyed it, make sure to give it a like and subscribe for more content. Right